look, the conditions, I think, had some of it, the emotions of the game. This has not been the sharpest uh, that we have seen LSU this year. Now, having said that, you know, they have had spurts where you can see there's an awful lot of talent running around in purple and gold and white. Uh, and when they work that two-man game through them attack, um, whether it's uh, with, with, with uh, Stinson and Brown or, as in tonight's case, Brown and Josh Henderson, um, they, they really have an awful lot of offensive talent. And, you know, their young deep holes and some of their, their, their long sticks have really done a nice job holding up. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the filling in the shoes of the past defenders uh, tremendously. Like you mentioned, it's usually Thomas Brown and Hunter Stinson. Tonight, Josh has really done some work. Um, but once once everybody's clicking on the same page, uh, this offense is a lot of fun to wor watch. I think one of the things I would, to, to uh, the youth or high school players uh, that are watching this on television, uh, particularly when we're in the six on six when LSU had, look at the amount of off ball movement uh, that you'll see. Too often when I'm watching games now, it's like a bunch of statues out there working the ball around and then somebody isos and you might try to skip it. But the amount of movement on the six on six for LSU, uh, you can really see how that wears down a defense. Um, and getting the younger players to understand that a lot of that movement isn't necessarily to sit up. Oh, there was, that's one, it was almost like a change up. Because that ball, that ball hit the mert and it was like the brakes. Uh, that hit the brakes. Yeah, that trickled in. Definitely trickled in. But Ashton did get his fourth goal, so uh, it's, it's going to be a battle between uh, uh, Ashton and uh, Josh Henderson for LA here for uh, top point on or top goal on us tonight. But as I was saying, you know, you, you know, you, you as a, you, the goalie who's got to keep track of the defense, when that offense is moving around, um, and it's not about getting an immediate shot. I mean, it's just to get the matchup you want offensively and to get right. the defense out of position. Oh, absolutely. Um, like you mentioned, as a goalie, you definitely got to take care of the defense, control it. Uh, communication is key, like I've mentioned before. But, um, well, that's always scary to see. <laughs> but, uh yeah, communication is key, but the offense tries to move around a lot. Um, and sometimes you'll move towards an open area. Maybe you'll get a pass and a quick shot. Um, so moving around helps the offense, and it's a nightmare for the defense. All right, this looks like some uh, street ball going on now. Is there uh, coming out loose? It's, uh, it looks like they're going to now finally pull it out and uh, try to get their offensive personnel in there. And that's awesome. I, try it with the ground ball. Yeah, I, and I think that's a case where it's 16 to 7 uh, with 9.46 to go, and uh, a couple guys saw an opportunity to pick up a tally there. So they were jamming it in there, but you can see that. And even there, look, LSU just ran a cutter through uh, number 44. And uh, he was open, um, but they just didn't get him the ball. But it was a nice play. There's a big hit, but what an assist. That's how. That's where you go scoreboard after a hit like that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I want to, I want to give Ross or Baker credit on that cut since I uh, I mentioned him. But uh, even more impressive than that big hit was that stick at the goal. Nice play. Nice play. And Josh Henderson, his fifth goal. Wow. Of tonight. So. Um, Somebody needs to give Josh a game ball uh, after this evening. I'll give him a pat on the back later. Well, he came into the year with uh, 20 goals on the season. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's dramatically run up. And actually now with 25, uh, you know, he's getting up there now where if you look at it, Thomas Brown has with two tonight has 33. Hunter Stinson has 36. You're talking about an attack where you've got, what, 25, 33, and 36 goals. That is some significant production. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you got the deep hole. Oh, making moves. But you got to like the deep hole going high and then low. Absolutely. Like, normally, they just want to crank from the outside with that wicked angle, but, you know, showing the stick skills. That was Danny Tangerini from Massachusetts. Uh, something that I've noticed just playing lacrosse for a few years is in the South, if you're from the South, it's a lot of football players, and you rely on that athleticism that you get. In the North, um, it's a lot about finesse. And like I said, Danny with that goal uh, from Massachusetts, so you saw him, deep hole, went high to low, or low to high, excuse me. 
and uh, it's all about that finesse in the north. So completely different um, aspects of the sport, I guess, but uh, both of them get the job done. So uh, LSU wins another possession. As we had mentioned, you know, we said uh, LSU with its three conference games remaining at tonight, Texas State, Houston, and uh, University of Texas. On the flip side, the team that came into the night in first place, the University of Texas at 2-0, uh, they've got Texas A&M. Uh, and then they will, of course, have the LSU game. And after the LSU game on uh, the third, they then play Texas State. So um, you know, both teams are in position as we have another goal. Uh, and right now, it is, it's is—it's just getting to be uh, pretty brutal out there as LSU scores yet again. Yeah, and then Hunter Stinson got on the board. There so, you go. so that'll make them happy. I know his parents are in, in the stands tonight, so they'll be very, uh, they'll be happy. And it'll be a big day because um, uh, their younger son, Logan, was uh, part of the Lafayette Hurricane team that beat my Baton Rouge Mustang squad today uh, in Lafayette. And now Hunter's going to get a victory. So big day for the Stinson family. So now we're at 19-7, and really, uh, as uh, Casey had talked to us about a few minutes ago, you're starting to see a lot of the second and third midfielders, some of the second line deep poles as, you know, look, LSU's got a lot to play oh, for this wow. season. That is some wonderful transition and tic-tac-toe. Josh Henderson with his sixth goal. And another assist from Thomas Brown. That connection between those two tonight is on point. Well, you come out with the face off, right, nice job, sees it, kicks, cross the field, nice play. And the thing is they had good space, and that's Absolutely. really where that stuff, those plays really work. Yeah, Josh is on fire tonight. Sorry, ladies, he's taken. Uh, but Thomas Brown with a bunch of assists tonight, he is single. And I'm sure you'll hear about that later when he watches the replay of this. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be on the uh, LSU Twitter feed. That shot was yeah, that was a nuke loose shot, just a way high, shooting for the mascot in the back there. What a save, uh, Casey. What do you have? Hey, thank you, JR. I'm down here on the side with Nick Latino, the administrator of the Dutchtown lacrosse program just outside of Baton Rouge. And we've been talking all, all game about the nice spread of, of players in the Dutchtown area and the Baton Rouge area. How does it feel to have so many players from your program represented in both purple and gold and black and white? Oh, we take a lot of pride in that. It's something else to see the kids. And as the sport has evolved, you know, through the Dutchtown, through Dutchtown themselves, I mean, we have five kids out here that play for LSU and see how they've, how they've grown and how we grow the sport. I mean, it's exciting. Excellent. Now, you've had one son who played for the Tigers. He's now concentrating on his grades, and you've got another son coming up through the Dutchtown ranks. Is he heading either to either of these programs? Oh, we hope so. He hopes so. Um, you know, we're enjoying that with him right now. Um, the squad themselves, are doing an excellent job. The coaches are working hard, along with the parents, to continue to grow the sport. And, um, you know, hopefully he gets to get some action out here also at some point. Excellent. Thank you so much. Nick Latino from the Dutchtown Lacrosse Program. Thank you, Casey. Uh, we've got a whistle here, stoppage of play. Looks like we have an equipment situation. Looks like we lost an end cap. Uh, yeah, I think Hunter's end cap came off the, the bottom of his stick. And you think, why do you have to stop the game for that? Well, if anybody's been hit by that metal on the bottom end, you know why. Uh, that's a pure safety issue. So I think now you're gonna, I'm gonna assume LSU, although I, I see a dodge down the wing, but I would have thought they're gonna try to take some of the air out of the ball here as it's now 20 to seven, just under seven minutes to go. I don't know, we've mentioned tonight about this rivalry. So <laughs> yeah. might. Well, and you know what? You put the second and third uh, midfielders and uh, the second line attack in there. Hey, look, they, they practice too. Absolutely. Um, and this is their reward for practice and to sit there and sort of shut them down can be, can be difficult, you know? Um, they put in as much time as the first line players. Oh, and when you have the third and the fourth and the fifth lines coming in, they want to see their name on that stat sheet. They want to get a goal. They want to put up a number on that scoreboard. Um, well, they want Patty to acknowledge whether or not they're available for dates or not. 
Oh, with the shot. What a save. That is a nice play. What a save. I want to say I can see why the coaching staff's high on uh, Thomas O'Brien. I mean, you know, uh, he's he seems like he's held his line pretty well, and he's been quick to react. Yeah, standing in there at 6-3. Oh, there we go. We have a goal by the deep hole. Who is that? I think that's John Frey. Yeah, even number 42 from UL uh, is, is congratulating them there. You know, when a when a deep hole gets one, you gotta you you gotta celebrate. And that's really a case where nobody stopped the ball, uh, which is the cardinal rule of lacrosse. When those transitions, you got to stop the ball. But we're going to have a timeout with uh, 5:59 to go in the game. LSU 21, UL Lafayette 7. You're watching LSU Lacrosse, presented by Bassett Furniture on Pelican Sports TV. Why would I go with boring when Bassett gives me great colorful options, all customized to match my style? There's nothing boring about Bassett. Pelican Sports TV presents Tiger's Roar, a live look at LSU football. Join Tommy Chrysan and Chris Landry every Wednesday night for Tiger's Roar, live on Pelican Sports TV in Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and New Orleans, and PelicanSportsTV.com. Welcome back to Olympia Stadium here in Baton Rouge. Uh, LSU's putting the final touches uh, on what's clearly at this point going to be a runaway victory over uh, uh, UL Lafayette. I'm J.R. Ball along with uh, Patty McLernan. And uh, Casey, I see who you're standing with on the field, and I don't think this is going to turn out well for me, but go ahead. No, this is going to be really good. Uh, I'm here with Logan Stinson, little brother of Hunter Stinson. Stud attackman from the Lafayette Hurricanes Club uh, over there, just down I-10. Logan, you've been watching this game all night long. What's it been like watching your brother play in the very historic first televised lacrosse game in Louisiana? Um, I feel really good for him. Uh, it's really exciting. Excellent. How has it been having your brother teach you the game and, and, and grow your skill set as you come up through the youth ranks in the high school level? It's been an honor to learn from him and get all the skills I can from him. Excellent. And I understand you're looking to make a number change from number 99 to a number next year. What number is that going to be? It's going to be number two. Oh, I wonder why that is. The Stinson legacy will live on. And one final question. Your brother spent two, two years at UL and now two years at LSU. Where do you think you're going to spend your college lacrosse playing days? Four years at LSU. Hey, you heard it here first, JR. Four years at LSU for, for Logan Stinson. There we go. Well, I know he had uh, about four goals this afternoon in, in, in beating my squad, so uh, he's got a deadly little left-handed shot. Okay, now that, now that I've sat there and relived the nightmare of what happened to our squad this afternoon, thank you for that, Casey. Let's get back to uh, four more pleasant things as LSU uh, really is just putting away uh, a convincing victory here. Uh, and this really sets LSU up for everything they want to do, Patty, as you look. I mean, look, their goals and objectives were simple. They wanted to uh, finish in the top two in their conference, which would give them a home game in the first round of the playoffs, uh, and, and get them on track to try to make the round of 16 tournament for a national title. Oh, absolutely. Definitely want to win the LSA. Uh, last year, it was unfortunate. Uh, we, content we contended for playoffs we made it to the playoffs but unfortunately we had an ineligible player that still played and we weren't allowed to travel and play playoffs um, but so this year they definitely have that on their wish list well, as you see, UL picks up a late goal to get it to be 21-8. And for, for LSU, you know, the, 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 this, you know, there's four games remaining in conference. The first step is tonight. And, you know, I, think, I feel pretty confident in saying LSU is going to win this one <laughs> with uh, 445 to go. Um, but, you know, and as we had talked about earlier, they win uh, two games. I mean, really, they got, they got three games left after tonight. They've got to win probably two of them to be assured of finishing first or second in the LSA South, which gets them a home game uh, when they get into uh, playoff action. 
And for you know those who aren't uh, familiar with what we're talking about, what what you'll see is the top four teams in the LSA South will match up against the top four from the northern side, and it's reverse out. So uh, let's you know you know the one and two seeds from the LSA South, which LSU's in, will host the four three, and vice versa. The one two from the LSA North will host three four from the South. Uh, at that point, the four winners will go to Dallas and play a four-team bracket. Uh, and given the strength of the LSA, I mean, you've, this is, you've got to be an automatic qualifier. You're, you're probably not going to get an at-large berth coming out of the LSA uh, into the 16-team championship, which will be in Carlson, California. So really what it comes down to for LSU is they want to host a game in divisional, make it to that four-team bracket in Dallas, uh, and then win that, which would get them in, as an automatic qualifier into the 16-team national championship tournament in Carson, California uh, later on this year. Sounds like a second spring break. <laughs> well, who would want to be in California in, in, in about four or five weeks? But the thing that's amazing, you know, when you think about all that, um, you know, you, you people think of like varsity sports, like you know, LSU football or basketball, where all those expenses are being paid by an athletic department. Uh, here in club level sports, you know, the people writing the checks are the players themselves. Right. Um, so this is not like Joe Oliva is cutting a check and sending the Tigers on their merry way. Uh, and I'm not picking on Joe Oliva, he just happens to be the athletic director. I mean, these players are going to have to dig in. Now, they do fundraisers, uh, but these players, not only are they athletically gifted, but they have to pay for the right to represent the purple and gold. Uh, and so they're, out, they're making a commitment beyond just their time and their talent. Right, right. Um, like you said, players have to pay to play. Um, at the club level, that's just something that you have to do. Maybe uh, one day LSU could be a varsity sport, but I know that teams like UT, you mentioned earlier tonight, they'll travel more. Uh, they'll travel to Colorado. They'll travel to California uh, just during the regular season, and so their dues will be more than something well, like LSU. Now, they're also blessed. Their athletic department kicks them $60,000 yeah, a year to awesome help nice. fund that program. Uh, that does not happen here uh, at, at LSU, nor does it happen at UL Lafayette. As you can see, some of the second and third line players for LSU are taking their turn rolling around from X and looking to jam to get their name into the scoring sheet for for tonight. But look, this is not about LSU complaining. These players know what they're getting into right. uh, when they're playing this. And this is a game of passion. And that's one of the things I really love about this MCLA lacrosse. These are not, I mean, these are kids who, you know, have to balance their academics. Uh, they got to pay. They got to do fundraising. They're going to have to clean up and do some of the other things. They, they'll make money cleaning up Tiger Stadium after football games to help fund their passion. Um, so there's an awful lot of commitment that goes into this. Uh, and they don't get, you know, they may not get the glory that, say, the football and basketball get, but they're every much uh, as committed athletes, and in some cases even more so because, you know, it's all about their, there's a lot of self-motivation going on. So as we come down to uh, the final minute here uh, of what's been a complete, uh, completely convincing victory for LSU, um, they, LSU a little sloppy, emotions a little high early on, but once they settled down and once they made the adjustment for Hunter Stinson being locked off, um, they, they just rolled. Yeah, that's nice to see. Um, they adjusted. They figured out what ULL was trying to do to arguably their best player, Hunter Stinson. Um, they figured out uh, the game plan, and you had Thomas Brown and Josh Henderson really go off, which helped the Tigers to this win. Yeah, I mean, and this was, you know, because, you know, you're so used to seeing it being a two man game out of LSU. And, you know, you look at the stats and you're going to see, well, it was. At this time, it was Thomas Brown and Josh Henderson. Uh, but there was an awful lot of contr contributions out of the midfield. Uh, and so this was, you know, while it probably wasn't the cleanest game that Coach Eccles has seen his team play, um, there was an awful lot of team lacrosse going on out there tonight. Well, it looks like we got a, a late penalty. So we'll see if hey, what a save. nice save. That shot really ate him up, but he hung tough there using his body. Reminded me of you, Patty, in the day. <laughs> Yeah, 
Another save. So we're down to the final 11, and now it's all about pride. I mean, UL wants to get that extra man goal, and you can tell LSU does not want to give up one last one. Let's see if they're going to. And then that's going to do it. They're going to just Gilman the ball down, and that's going to get us to the end of the contest here. A convincing victory, LSU 21. UL Lafayette, eight, um, all-around team victory. Patty, just thoughts, overview of what we saw here tonight. Uh, well, no, as we've touched on it before, uh, Josh Henderson really stepped in in this game, did a tremendous job, had help from the midfielders. And then late, you got to see O'Brien really step into the cage, and he gave us quite a show for being in there for a little bit of time. Yeah, I mean, it was convincing as we talked about. Josh with six goals, the leading uh, goal scorer for the night. Uh, Thomas Brown had both the assists and uh, three goals out of the attack. Uh, Hunter Stinson got on late, got picked up a pair of goals. Uh, but even when you looked out of the midfields, we had, what, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like seven uh, goals coming out of the midfield uh, as well. And then I guess we had a deep hole uh, goal in transition. Uh, to round out the scoring for LSU. So, uh, LSU is going to move to 2-0 and in conference, 8-3 and overall. Uh, UL Lafayette, uh, which is going to drop a tough win as they uh, head to the final weekend of their season. They're going to drop to 3-9, and 0-4 oh and in conference with uh, one game uh, remaining uh, for them. Uh, we're waiting for Coach Eccles to finish up with his team so that Casey can get him so we can get a word with him. Uh, but again, one of the things in, uh, with, the, with the graphic up that I like about lacrosse is, you know, with all the hacking and slashing and the battling that goes on, you end the game with, you know, the, both teams lining up for a handshake, um, which I actually I think is one of the nicer parts of the game. You compete hard, but then there's sportsmanship afterwards. Oh, absolutely, and it's a great time uh, for you to see some of your friends that you might know. Uh, say hey to them real quick. Uh, but also congratulate them on the on the win or uh, just telling them great game. Well, I want to thank uh, Bassett Furniture for making this broadcast possible, the first collegiate lacrosse game to be televised featuring Louisiana teams. Uh, be sure you can watch these games on the Pelican Sports TV network. Uh, they'll be on, the game will air Sunday, March 22nd at 4.30 p.m., Monday, March 23rd, 5.30 p.m., uh, Tuesday, March 24th at 4.30 p.m., and I believe the game will also be streaming on the Internet. Uh, but for those who do it the old school way of cable, uh, both in the Baton Rouge and Lafayette area, you can watch it on Cox Cable, either Channel 113 or, or 1013 for the high def in New Orleans, Cox 116, ATT UVerse uh, Channel 11. Uh, the digital tuner on Cox is 113. Your high def digital tuner for Cox is 713. And then on KPBN, uh, VHF Channel 11, uh, Digital TV 14.1. Uh, and I see Coach Eccles is making his way towards uh, uh, Casey and trying to get him in camera range to get some final thoughts before uh, we get out of here. But it was an historic night. Um, Probably wasn't the prettiest lacrosse we've ever seen, but it was certainly was a dominating effort by the Tigers. Uh, and I give the the players we knew for UL to be good were good. I mean, I'm telling you, Ashton Langland, that is a big time player, both at face off and he's got a cannon. But for right now, let's go down to Casey, down with Coach Eccles. Thank you, Jr. Here with Coach Eccles here after the contest, LSU get coming away with the victory. Coach, we uh, had a little jinx there at halftime. We, we talked about no rain holding off, and then it came down pouring. Uh, we didn't exactly get the game plan we wanted with the weather going into next weekend. You've got three tough contests. Tell me about how you can prepare this week. Well, first of all, the main thing is I want to be glad that we are, we're healthy. And that's the main thing was get through the game, make sure that we were healthy all the way around. Uh, probably get right after it on Monday and get ready to play probably the toughest stretch we've got left with three games. That's exactly right. Um, we definitely need to look, not just overlook the first game of the season, but we've got a very, very tough Texas State, which LSU has never beaten Texas State before. We've got them Saturday night, a conference game, and then we roll right into Houston and play a very difficult and high-scoring Houston squad. Now, middle of the game, we got a little chippy, some sloppy play. We noticed it all throughout the game. We had throws going long. We had we had sticks checked. We had, we had a little body-to-body -body contact with some penalties. What did you say to the Tigers to calm them down? 
Well, probably one of the first things is I told them like I did at halftime is I said we've got to play our game and, and stay focused on what our mission is out here. Uh, the rain did probably play a little bit of a role in that. You know, the, the, the pockets got a little wet. Uh, but the main thing we just definitely tried to do was to try – one thing they were doing is they were locking off Stinson, and we, we realized that. So we tried to run uh, a couple of different offensive sets to basically get him in some different formations and get him clean. Uh, one of them was we ran him as a midfielder, so that kind of helped get him clean. And, um, you know, then I, I was just proud of kind of the way the guys persevered. Yeah, you mentioned they locked off Stinson, and, and that, that allowed Josh Henderson to open up his offense and have a great scoring effort. Talk to us about, about him stepping up and, and filling that role that you needed with Drew Campbell being out and some other guys. Well, well said, Casey, and Josh has done an awesome job. He's just one of those utility players that can play both attack it's and midfield. Uh, with Drew Campbell sustaining the injury earlier this year, we, you know, we took Josh. Uh, he did play attack when he was in high school, and he was able to just step right in uh, in, in the roster and the lineup uh, pretty much uh, without any seams. Uh, but he's got great hands. That's the main thing. I mean, you can almost throw the ball anywhere around him. He's going to catch the ball, and he's going to finish, and he is a great finisher. Excellent, Coach. Well, we made history tonight. We had the first televised collegiate Louisiana lacrosse game. It came out in your favor. That's really great. We also made history uh, a little bit late in the game with Logan Stinson actually letting us know that he's going to commit to you for four years at LSU. How does that make you feel? Uh, that's outstanding. That may be the first uh, early commit that we've ever had, and I'm going to tell you in the bloodline and the Stinson family, I'll be welcome to have Logan Stinson uh, wearing the purple and gold one day. Excellent, Coach. Well, congratulations again. We're going to send it back to the booth. You guys have a great week of preparation, and good luck next week in Texas. Thank you, Casey. Great job to the Pelican staff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you, JR and, and Patty. Thank you, uh, Casey. Thank you, Coach Eccles. Look, it was a dominating uh, performance, by the way, for those watching at home. Uh, doing the fabulous dancing act behind there was lockdown defender Lawton Perrette, who was uh, behind Coach Eccles, who was showing uh, some dance moves. I don't know what his social status is, Patty. I'll defer to you on that. <laughs> um, I think he's single. So uh, there they, you go, ladies. So there you go. But uh, that, it was a dominating victory. Um, LSU 21, UL Lafayette 8. I want to thank everybody for being a part of this to the gang in the truck. Uh, you guys were making our job simple and easy. We really appreciate it. Uh, but again, for, on behalf of everyone associated with Pelican Sports, we want to thank Bassett Furniture for all they did to make this uh, broadcast possible. Uh, this has been LSU Lacrosse on Pelican Sports TV, your final LSU 21, UL Lafayette 8. Yeah, I felt it earlier. I had to switch ears. I had to switch the right ear, but it worked.